Hey gang, welcome back to a Wednesday edition of Money and Politics, and we're going to uh, be covering so many things tonight that I really ordinarily should be doing this as probably about two or three different videos, uh, but I'm excited. I think a lot of people out in Humble Land are excited. Uh, we're going to Nashville, Thomas and I, tomorrow he took Thursday and Friday off. I got my work done early, which is why I'm coming to you late today because I had so much to get done. In fact, I think I was, I'm dressed like this because I was going to go out and cut the grass. I got a window off to my side as I look out. I'm starting to get a little dark. I may not have the time. I was just trying to get that done. Anywho, uh, a couple of things that we're, we'll go over here today, and, and let's uh, see about getting to them. The first thing, uh, let's start off with just um, where we are in Humble Land. And uh, Humble, uh, I, I have a couple of things to say about this. Uh, I will be meeting Brian... I'm happy to say, probably a lot of people will be meeting Brian uh, down in Nashville. So I hope that I'll gleam some more information to share with you. Um, I don't expect to get any insider information, but just, you know, some impressions and talk into them and things like that and things that he'll want to share. It'll be, it'll be fun. Anywho, you can see that uh, we are back up today. It was a positive day on Wall Street. There's a whole lot going on politically right now, folks, and I should be covering that as well, and I apologize that I haven't. I didn't call it money and politics for nothing, and I should be doing more on the on the politics of it. Um, but anyway, what you can see is that we've been kind of treading water here. One thing I will say uh, about Humble and is that I, I actually bought more today on the TQQ which is one of my very favorite things, and that's the three times leveraged index of the NASDAQ, which has gone up like 1,200% over the last five years. I sold a bit, not all, I sold some uh, of my TQQ because the, the market uh, has been at record highs. Uh, the NASDAQ was up again today um, about... 1% if I'm reading that right. Uh, let's see if I can get that anymore. Uh, anyway, I think it was about 1% and the TQQ was up. Uh, but the reason that I'd want to bring your attention is that the Federal Reserve came out today. So it's been a busy news day here. The Federal Reserve came out and said that they were going to probably be raising interest rates over the next three years or so from now through the end of 2024. They projected that they think they could raise interest rates maybe as many as six or seven times. Now, typically what the federal do when they raise rates, especially if they're raising the rates that often, is that they would raise about a quarter of a point. So they're not gonna do anything dramatic. They're not gonna go out, typically they're not, and raise rates, you know, 1% at one time. They're gonna raise rates from near zero where we've been for a while because they thought that the economy was weak. And so they were putting a lot of liquidity into the economy, about $120 billion a month they've been doing. So now they're going to be raising rates some. And if you've been thinking about uh, refinancing your home and you haven't, uh, you might want to get to that, okay? So there you go. So there's that. And that's why I just think as they raise rates, that's going to slow down the growth of the economy. That's on one hand, why they do it a bit. They also are anticipating, the Fed is, that we're going to be coming out of COVID and that the economy is going to be strong enough to tolerate higher interest rates. The interest rates we have are not 
are they are out of line with the historical norm. The historical norm would be more in the neighborhood of about four to eight percent if you go back over the last 70 years. I mean, we've had times where they are historically abnormal as they were around 1980. Uh, and they are times where they're historically low, and that is this time. This is as much out of whack as it was during the 1980s when it was really high. So for that reason, I could see that the, the game, the uh, stock market that we've had for the last number of years, five, six, seven years, uh, we are going to go into a stock market where there's still going to be winners and losers, but it may not be as great for the indexes as it has been for the last seven years. So looking backwards, we got the TQQ 1200% uh, over the last five years, may not have that going forward. I can't say, uh, but anyway, that's where I, I decided to take some money off the table. And if I didn't say it, I took some of that money and I bought more Humble. Okay, I don't think Humble is going to be hanging around here for long below a buck. So while it's down here, uh, I bought some more. So that's, you know, that's that. So those are a couple of things I wanted to say. And, and yes, keep, the, keep not trying to be too geeky. Now, there is another company that I wanted to, oh, before I get to that, let me go to, um, as I mentioned the other day, in mode. In mode, which I've often said has like been my favorite stock for a while now. In mode was up again today. You see, during the day, uh, eight dollars, which is a five percent gain, and in after hours, continuing to climb uh, about close to a dollar. So now we're at one hundred and fifty-eight. As I mentioned, out in July when I brought this to your attention, it was one hundred and eight dollars. And that day it had gone up $12. So it had really been started off, I think it was July the 12th, it started off July the 12th at about $96. And look at it today, 158 in after hours. This is going to split two for one uh, on September 30. It'll start trading at the post split price whatever that is, because we don't know where, it'll be half of what it closed at on September 30. Um, I was guessing yesterday 150, so now we're looking at more, you know, 160 or above. Uh, it'll, it'll close at the, it'll, it'll open on October 3rd, uh, if that's a Monday. I don't have the calendar in front of me. I think that's a Monday. It'll, it'll open the first trading day of October uh, at, at half the price it was on the last day of September. Okay, so that's going up, and you can see not only that that the volume is very strong. About one million one hundred thirty-five thousand shares traded today. The average ten-day average was about uh, seven hundred and ten thousand, so significantly up its average. And what you're seeing here is a one-year chart uh, of what it has done. So. Um, why is this? Ugh, ugh, ugh. Things are just not <laughs> working out. Something moved on me. Uh, let me reposition this thing. Okay, and let's go. So let me bring that in just so you can see, and I'll get on it. Here's, here's the one-year chart. And so you go back to a year ago, you could have been buying this sucker at $40, folks. $40. Imagine if you had bought 1,000 shares for $40. For, well, that would have been $40,000. Uh, you could have bought 1,000 shares a year ago. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm even, even below 40, but let's just say 40. And now we are at about 160. So your $40,000 uh, investment of a year ago would today be worth $160,000. Um, I wasn't doing the show a year ago. So look how much money it's cost you that I wasn't doing the show a year ago. <laughs> so, you know, it pays to watch. 
I should have, I apologize that I didn't bring this to your attention earlier in the year because I had been doing the show, started doing the show right about here when it was at $58. And there you go. You can, you can, if you see me in Nashville, you can blame me then. So we talked about the TQQ, what I sold. We talked about I bought Humble. We talked about with the Fed raising rates. And the other thing I'm going to bring to your attention is another stock. And I, I don't want to say just yet. This is, this. let me bring it up. So this is, um, let me raise this here, Health Space Data Systems. Now, I know a lot of you don't like that I talk about in mode because it's $160 and you want a penny stock. Well, here's a penny stock for you. In fact, as you can see, it is almost exactly the same price as what, uh, as what Humble is right now. Um, Humble is 83.98 cents. This is 83.38 cents. Now, here's the good and the bad about health space data systems. And this is a perfect, you know, money in politics. This is a perfect stock for money in politics because this is a company that sells cloud-based services to government. Okay? I cover government. It sells health a cloud-based health data management, I'm paraphrasing here, to municipal government, county government, uh, and state government. Now, one of the big <coughs> contracts they got, I don't have the exact date, I think it was roughly a year ago, was with San Francisco, the city of San Francisco. Then right across the bay, they got Marin County. They recently did some work down in uh, Dallas and then in some of the surrounding areas. There are at least two counties, um, Vermilion County here in Illinois and Mason County, which is about an hour north of me, that do work, uh, have, have contracts with this company. So... I'm going to play a clip. I just interviewed the CEO yesterday for a half an hour. I'm going to load that whole half an hour on the money and politics now for you to watch. However, I'm going to play about a three minute clip here in a second where I ask the CEO Silas uh, Garrison uh, about where he thinks his company is going to go. Where are they now? They are currently doing about $4 million. He thinks they'll, they'll do about $4 million this year. So that's, you know, in the millions of dollars, but still a micro cap. Now, this is a company that's been around for a number of years, but they were really kind of reinvented about three years ago when Silas Garrison became the CEO. A lot of the early work that has to go into a company, as we've seen with Humble, where it kind of takes a while to get rolling. A lot of that work, Silas Garrison and his team have been working on. As I just said, they're doing sales. They're building sales. I'm going to play the clip in a moment here where he talks about the sales. But bef before you run out and try to buy a boatload of these, um, I want to point out the problem is that most people don't have Papa Humble telling you about this, them about it. The point is, look at the volume. The volume on this company traded today was almost nothing. In other words, they only did 1,800 shares, and that's on an 83-cent stock. So the problem with this is that it is very thinly traded. Now, if you look at the 10-day moving average, it's, it's been averaging 5,700 shares. Still woefully low. That's not being critical. That's just... It is what it is, and that's a problem for you trying to buy a whole lot of shares without building this up on your own. Am I telling you to load up on this? What I would say is this, and I talked about this uh, somewhat off camera with Mr. Garrison. The, the problem, there's good and bad in dealing with government. The good thing is there's a lot of money in government. The bad thing is 
that people in government move at about one-third the speed of the public sector. Mr. Garrison didn't say this. I'm saying it. You get some people in government that just are phen phenomenal, phenomenal in, um, in what they do. And they do a great job, and we're, you know, as, a, as citizens, we're blessed to have them. But a lot of people in the bureaucracy just take really long time to get moving. Now, the other thing that has held this company back is COVID. Now, COVID on this is a two-edged sword, okay? On one hand, the fact that the people, were, the employees in government here were not there, and they were so busy, they, because again, this is called health space data systems. So they're trying to help people in government deal with health data using cloud-based technologies. It's going to make government more efficient. It's going to make the use of that data much easier to use. Now that said, the problem is with COVID, these people have been, I'm giving you an context here. The, the, uh, the state employees have not been at their desk. Uh, the municipal people have been out. And so the company has been moving forward, but slower than I would say that they would normally be moving. So I anticipate that this company is going to grow and start to grow at a faster rate than they have as, as these local government people uh, are no longer overburdened with dealing with the immediate crisis of COVID. The good part of COVID is that it makes it easier, I am saying this, not Mr. Garrison, it makes it easier for health space data to sell their wares to local governments around the country, and they're focused primarily on the United States, but also they have some business in Canada. But it makes it easier because now government, who might have said, why would I want to have a system where my employees could use this from home? Now they know why. Because their employees were working from home. And with the cloud-based system, they don't have to be at their desk at the office. They can be doing their work at home. They can be entering data on the cloud-based system. They can be analyzing the data from the cloud-based system. They can be doing their reports. They can download the data into Excel. And that was one of the things that uh, Mr. Garrison told me they did because people in government said that would be really handy if we could download this to Excel because we want to share it with some other people. And what he said is by word of mouth, this company is growing. And that's why when they got to San Francisco, they picked up Marin County. When they got someplace, I think it's Dallas, but I, I may, I don't want to trust my memory here. They picked up some of the counties around there. And he said, that's not unusual. Now, this is going to be, and I'm sorry for holding this up so long. It's about a three minute clip where I ask him, where does he see the revenues of the company going uh, over the next three years, and then I'll talk a little bit after that when we come out. Here we go, Mr. Silas Garrison. For a publicly traded company, you're on the over-the-counter market here uh, in the United States. Canada probably has a slightly different uh, ticker symbol, but uh, there's the American symbol. If anyone is interested, I think currently as we tape this in September, uh, September 21, you're in the neighborhood of 82 cents or so. Um, what, what do you see the, the future for the company uh, as a CEO, as a publicly traded company? What would you tell investors about the opportunity as you see it? Yeah, I mean, the opportunity, well, I mean, from a just sheer market size, uh, it's, it's hundreds of millions of dollars just in the near term or uh, the near the nearby markets that we serve, environmental health, public health, uh, at departments of agriculture. These are all agencies that are our customers. Uh, and they, we, you know, we're at right around, you know, four and a half million in annual recurring revenue that ARR, very important SaaS based metric. And so right around that four and a half million dollar market we sit right now, we project that we'll close the end of this year, calendar year of 2021, somewhere around five, five and a half. 
Um, but really the opportunity is, is far beyond that. Uh, we anticipate by the end of 2022 nearing or achieving uh, 10 million in ARR. Uh, and that's kind of our next, next benchmarks. So we're over the next 12 to 18 months as we sit today, uh, getting to 10 million in ARR, but really beyond that over the next five uh, to seven years, our focus is to get to 50 million plus uh, in ARR. And that is, you know, that it can be done just with the environmental health market alone, but we're starting to go into other adjacent verticals, such as code enforcement, another local agency type that has very similar needs, licensing, inspections, billing, and all of those things that can directly benefit from our cloud-based solutions, not to mention GovCall and the opportunity that represents. And one thing that we didn't talk about, Terry, which is uh, our, our FinTech solution, which is HS Pay. Uh, it's an online and mobile payment solution that streamlines the intake of governmental revenue uh, and to this day, so many government agencies, on the especially on the local uh, level, um, the majority of the revenue when they're issuing you know, licenses and there's a fee involved, the majority of that revenue is still collected through you know check in the mail or cash in person. So when we talk about efficiency, um, that is our core focus, and we've got you know four great products uh, that really hit home on that. But mainly our cloud-based data management plus GovCall plus HS Pay major revenue drivers, and we anticipate a lot of growth, uh, not just in this coming quarter, or not just next year, but over the next five, six, seven years, uh, we anticipate really taking a massive bite out of the government sector. And uh, it's a multi-billion dollar segment, you know, it's uh, $50 million in achievable revenue in just terms of next, you know, call it five years, is really uh, a very small percentage of the overall market size when you gauge it that way. So there you go. Uh, that's part of what was a 30-minute interview, but I think that was a key part for investors. Uh, again, this is a, a stock that is currently at, what, 83 cents, uh, except for the short volume. <clears throat> I think I have not as yet purchased any shares, but I, I will. I think as he talked, that, and, and I'll, I'll not go much longer here, but as I said, because I'm going to be out Thursday and Friday in Nashville and out Monday, I won't be able to be posting it. So these are things I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, if you watch this tonight, you can watch the whole half hour tomorrow night, if you wish. Uh, I haven't posted that as yet. However, my read on this company is that it could end up uh, doing very well. I can't tell you that it's going to do very well. I think that um, we we have to get the volume up. Of course, if Humble Land starts buying this stock, uh, but just note that you know you, you typically don't want to be in a company that is so thinly traded you can't get in and out. So that if you go to buy any shares here, my suggestion is that you start uh, just nibbling. And fortunately, these days, without a, um, without, let, let me go ahead and go full screen. These days, without uh, commissions, we can go ahead and buy, um, you know, 10 shares. 20, I mean, for heaven's sakes, 10 shares is $8.30. Uh, you could buy 100 shares, you know, um, that would be $83. Mike, it's not the money I'm talking about. It's the thinly traded. If they're doing on average 5,000 shares, well, it's hard to say. You know, uh, again, today they did 1,800. So could you get in and out uh, easily? You probably could on 10 shares if you wanted to buy and sell, but I don't know about uh, 100 shares. And the more you buy, the more problematic it would be. Um, if this company put it on your, put it on your stocks to watch, what you might do is, is buy 10 shares, buy 20 shares. Uh, and then that way it's in your portfolio as a reminder, uh, to, to take a look at what happens to the volume. If people start buying this up, even in, in, itsy bitsy pieces, you know, buying 10 shares, buying 20 shares and doing it that way. If the volume gets up there, I think this company 
has a lot of room to run, and you heard what Mr. Garrison said. They're talking about going um, from what is four million uh, now to I think five million in this current fiscal year, and then going from five to ten. And then he said down the road, what did he say? In five years that he's looking for, I believe I'm remembering what he said right here, five years he's looking at doing maybe his 50 million. So this is the kind of company that, uh, like a lot of companies, could either do one of a couple of things. It could be bought out uh, or it could just stay who they are and, and then as they get the ball rolling, like making a snowman, all of a sudden they start cycling. Every time they cycle, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. I know this, folks, and I'll wrap up with this. I know that there is a lot of inefficiency in government, old computer systems in government, government desperately needs to look at companies like this that can bring in the newer systems, the cloud-based systems, where they can have the payments that they can make, uh, the phone calls designed, video phone calls designed for government, uh, as well as the data storage systems uh, itself. This is, this is the kind of thing that uh, could become a major company. So it, it, what am I saying? I'm saying in, in essence, this is a, a stock that is priced the way I know a lot of people in Humble Land like to see stocks priced. Uh, I would be more enthusiastic about it if its volume was there. So if the volume picks up, uh, then, you know, it, I, I, think, I think that would be one of the big big challenges overcome for this company. And, and then let's follow and see what their revenues did. I talked to Mr. Garrison about doing a follow-up interview with him uh, at some point here in the future, sometime before now in the end of the year. And so I can update you on that. Uh, I think I'll go out and buy a handful of shares. Uh, just don't go too crazy until the overall volume picks up. And, you know, who knows, maybe... Maybe we'll see the volume going to 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 a day because that's really something where the word has to get out. Just as, just as we are getting the word out on Humble, uh, the word needs to get out on a company like this that so far it's, it's flying well below the radar of a lot of people. Okay, folks, so I'm going to uh, then wrap up. Send me your emails, if you will. Understand that I'm going to be in Nashville. I'm going to be on the road. I'm going to be kind of unplugged. Part of that is Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday, Thomas and I will be coming back. I hope to do some updates on Twitter using my cell phone uh, with, uh, with me and Thomas and maybe Rebecca and maybe some others. So you will be able to follow me in that way. And for that, uh, with that said, I will say good night. I hope you guys, uh, if, we're, if you're going to um, be in Nashville, do stop by. If you're going to be, I presume, at the Acme Bar on the river, that's where Thomas and I will be. Come by, say hello. Looking forward to seeing you all. And with that, I've already gone too long, but again, maybe you want to Take a listen to tonight's show that's a half an hour long and just look, listen to it again over the uh, next couple of days. As I said, I certainly had enough material, material here that I could have done about three or four different shows, but I'm packing them into one because I'll be on the road. All right, folks, uh, take care and we'll see you when we see you post Nashville and, of course, I'm sure I'll be talking to you about what I learned down there and what my impressions are and what's happening in the rest of the world. Until then, we'll say goodnight.